Hey, so we are back. Um, now we're going to be uh, setting up Ableton for what we want to do um, and other system optimization stuff. So what we'll do is we'll go to Options, Preferences. I'll move that in there. Um, so basically what we want is we want to For this one, I, if you want your plugin windows to hide or not hide, it's up to you. But I don't like it when they um, hide. Yeah. Um, so depending on the video card that you or uh, audio card that you have, um, I would suggest that you get one. Uh, Mo2 makes some really good ones. If you can't afford that, uh, M Audio or whatnot. If you're on a Mac, Core Audio works just fine for now. Um, but you really should, if you're on a Windows machine, you should, uh, and you're just using your onboard audio, you should uh, download the ASIO for all, A-S-I-O 4, like the numeral 4, and A-L-L, -L, and that uh, installs some really nice uh, drivers that are universal for that. Driver type should always be ASIO. Oh, please don't crash. What the hell happened there? What the hell? Yeah. I'll be using my Motu audio as you. Um, for all that fun stuff. Oh, wait, that's not going to open. Never mind. Um, input config, you really shouldn't be worrying about. Output config, it's usually default. You can check. Yeah. So. You don't really need to worry about that unless you're using like a giant Fireface ME. Um, your in out sample rate should be 44. Um, just for, you know, ease and having no headaches. All samples in Wave are 44. So don't worry about it. You want to set your um, pitch conversion to high quality. So anything you warp or, you know, all your audio is in super high quality. Uh, you turn this off if your computer's, you know, was made in 1978. But like high quality, that's good to go. Your buffer size. I'm not sure about ASIO for all, but you should really kind of have the default. I think there's a panel in the in the ASIO for all that um, has this set up already. But if you're having like clicks and dropouts, you increase the buffer sample size. But mine's default because, you know, Motu is pretty cool. And you have, yeah, your test tone. And, uh, yeah, that, sh that should work out pretty well. Um, I, however, don't, I'm not getting any MIDI input from my uh, giant keyboard I have here. So what I want to do is I just want to go on and on. You track it and then you can see the light lights up like magic. So now Ableton's receiving MIDI from my MIDI um, keyboard and uh, which is always nice. Um, my temporary folder um, yeah we'll get to that. Um, my temporary folder is my scratch disk and Ableton temp and my scratch disk needs to uh, yeah and this would be the scratch disk Ableton temp yes and that's just like all recordings kinda go there and because uh, I have an SSD, I don't want it all going to my SSD. Um, I don't use Max. Um, cache folder, yeah, that's fine. So what we want to do is we want to um, make sure our VSTs are plugged in. So we'll use custom VST folder. My folder is Steinberg VST plugins. And then I go, yeah, scanning. So this won't take that long, and I hope it does not crash. 
and uh, we're back and uh, um, you have all my all your plugins loaded in there took a while to scan I didn't I didn't know it would take that long to scan um, yeah make sure you, you always uh, install your plugins into a single folder um, and make sure they're 32-bit for now in the next couple of years everything will be 64-bit it'll be a lot more easier and uh, you know, we'll just continue um, everything that's um, uh, default is still really good make sure you have your uh, multi-core if you have a multi-core make sure it's on and uh, enjoy all your things and you can make sure Ableton install correctly and uh, yeah that should do it um, which will take you to your uh, default set and what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of the info view with question mark what I like to do is I like to usually we won't be um, using uh, returns for now um, I rarely use them and I only use them in mastering and they kinda get in the way so I'm gonna select them and press delete to get rid of them um, we're going to be making a default set um, and uh, you're going to want to turn on the M so it just shows or it like displays your volume and um, uh, you can solo so it's all nice and easy you don't need to worry about the late compensation assuming you're not using gear like outboard gear and in out I usually have in out um, when just just out of habit because this is how you route and record um, so what we'll do first thing you should do is go to your audio effects and uh, just plop down your EQ8 um, you're going to be mix using this on basically all your tracks every every track in your track when I say tracks I mean the channel strip and uh, a compressor and just at default it's fine you're gonna wanna right click on the top here and select high quality so your EQ is super high quality well not super high, well it's more high quality than it would would have been uh, this is for like live use so it doesn't you know mess up that so you don't when you don't when you render it doesn't sound different you're like what the hell's going on you're gonna wanna uh, hold shift select these both copy and then you're going to want to go to your MIDI paste so you still get the same high quality and then you're going to uh, I usually uh, give this a different color I'll select control D duplicate the MIDI and uh, yeah we'll just we'll leave it at 2 and then your audio I do different ones I will do blue for your audio control D collapse those and I'll copy the audio up top here and I will um, paste that right down at the bottom so oh now I'll move this down here and then I'll go control D D D D right so I have two audio up here I'll give these a different color I usually use the top ones for uh, crashes and filter sweeps and random effects and then down here the kick percussion da, da, da. and if I need more I'll just press control D as I need it and yeah that kinda keeps it organized um, and I'll just have two MIDI channels usually I have more and I'll have uh, MIDI routed into uh, into my virus and then back out to audio but for the sake of um, this lesson will uh, just keep it simple so you have your MIDI channels audio up top here and it just kinda gives a little bit more space and then all your your meat of the track um, is down here then we'll click on the master this is the last thing that we'll, we'll put on here what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna put on a limiter right but if you have uh, the waves plugins you should put the L2 
So it's the limiter or the L2. The limiter makes sure nothing pokes through and causes um, your master to go into the red and that could cause some clipping and some issues and it might hurt your ears. Um, I do this, I've been doing this, I've been using the L2 as a limiter for a long time and then, well during the making of the track and then as I'm mixing I'll move the threshold down and check out my mastering video uh, and you'll you'll figure it out. I will then use an EQ8 down here but not for EQing, I'll use this as a nice smooth filter. So what I did there is I I uh, selected the one, you can select it right here, and I moved it far to the left, to the low end of the spectrum, and then did that. This axis two things, this rolls a little bit off of the bottom, and uh, it acts as a nice kind of filter sweep. I will put down a delay, or a ping pong delay I should say, put that down there, add that to zero. And then I'll have that delay going into a reverb, just in case I need it. And you can always double clip, double click to collapse these guys in it. That's yeah, quite nice. It's quite nice. You can you make up your own master chain. You can add phasers and all that fun stuff. Um, what else do I do? Oh yeah, I use the. Oops. I use the L. Where's the Lin? Lin EQ low band stereo. Uh, this cleans up the bottom end. I highly recommend it. You're going to want to turn it on. And anything below around 30, 35 hertz, it rolls off. And it's it, and it kind of cleans up the low end. And you should have this before it goes into your limiter maximizer. And yeah, that's what I do. Uh, if you want this, you're going to want this to start up every time you start live. So you'll want to go to File Folder, Save Set as Default. And then you'll save that and you'll always have it. Uh, this exact setup every time you open live. Only one thing I do is I select this to None. Um, and uh, it's just so when you click the space bar and when when the track's playing it doesn't wait a bar it doesn't wait to switch over it just does it right away which is good for going back and forth and for your in previewing samples yeah and uh, that should do it and I will be back with part 1.3 take care